Okay, we are back. This is TechMath 2. We are looking at review for chapter 7 8. Part 2, part 2, part 2, part 2. So eliminate D, solve for M. What you're going to do there is we're going to eliminate through substitution. So they already have it solved for D for us. So we're going to take MP and put it into the other equation. So now we have this. H is equal to MP quantity squared T. So there is no more D. So we've done that first part. We've eliminated D. Now solve for M. So we say, okay, squared P squared T. We want to isolate the M. It's all being multiplied, so we'll divide by everything that's not M. P squared T. P squared T. So that cancels, that cancels. And M squared is equal to H over P squared T. And then take the square root. Again, if you give me the plus or minus in front of it, I will still give you full credit. But, um, We'll have the square root of what? H over T. And the square root of P squared can come out, but it's on the bottom. So 1 over P square roots of H over T. But that's equal to, you could have also written it like this, where you had the square root of H over P square root of h over p square root t. That's just a different way to write the same thing. That's fine either way. Um, okay. And you could rationalize the denominator. So then you'd have the square root of ht over pt if you rationalize the denominator. But you do not have to do that. All right, let's see, look at 13. Eliminate d and solve for A. So eliminate D, solve for A. So to eliminate D, we're going to have to solve this for D first. That's pretty easy, cross multiply. So D is equal to AS, and we're going to take that AS and jam it into the other one. So we have S is equal to the square root of A plus AS. All right, now square both sides. We're solving for A. All right, so we got S squared. So in order to isolate A, to get A all by itself, because there's two of them and it's being added, we're gonna have to factor. Factoring is the anti-distribution. It's like the distributive property, but in reverse. So remember when you had three times x plus seven, and then you just did three times x and three times seven, that was three x plus 21. That was the distributive property. We're gonna undo that. We're gonna pull it out. So what can I factor out of those? An a, I put that down, I do an empty set of parentheses. Whatever I write down here, I divide it in each term, term by term. And so then I have one plus s equals, so a times quantity one plus s equals s squared, that's not s to the 12th, that's just how I make my s's so you know they're not fives. And then one plus s, one plus s, we divide, that cancels, and that's it. You cannot cancel anything because this is add and subtract. You can only cancel those if it was being multiplied, it's not being multiplied. So that's where the show stops. It is a very common error. So um, make sure not to do that. To cancel when you can't cancel. Okay, let's keep going. Just keep swimming, 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 swimming. Okay, so eliminate V, solve for S. 14, eliminate V, solve for S. Eliminate V, solve for S. So we can take this, sub it in there. So 
t is equal to the square root of r squared minus ks quantity squared. And then what do we have? We've got t is equal to the square root of r squared minus k squared s squared. Then we square both sides. No more square root. So we got r squared minus k squared s squared. Now isolate the s. So subtract r squared from both sides. We got t squared minus r squared <coughs> equals negative k squared s squared, divide both sides by negative k squared, and again, I'll do the negative one thing on the bottom and the top, so we end up with this, we have s squared equals negative t squared plus r squared over k squared, so we distribute the negative basically. All right, now take the square root of both sides. I'll rearrange these. So S is equal to R squared minus T squared over K squared. So we have the square root of the whole thing, but I split it up. This, is, this can be simplified. So we, this is not rationalizing the denominator. I mean, it, it did end up rationalizing it, but it wasn't an extra step. This is just simplifying. You have to simplify squares that you can simplify. Now, this top, I can't simplify anything there. That was a big mistake that many of you made on the last test. Don't do that. You cannot distribute a square root over a plus or a minus sign. So this is not r minus t over k. That would be wrong. If you wrote that down, cross it off and remind yourself. You can only do square roots, separate square roots and squares with things that are being multiplied, like not added or subtracted. Okay? Then uh, 15 is awful, and there is not going to be one like 15 on the test. I'll do it for you here, but it's a little too tedious. I don't want you really to worry about that. Again, it's it's callback, it says solve for t. It is a callback to Tech Math 1 when we did the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's how we would find x equals, you probably remember it as, but I did t because that's what we're working with here, t equals. So a is the thing in front of the t squared, which in this case is d. b, the thing in front of the t, which in this case is negative p, and C is the thing that doesn't have a T on it at all, which is N. You're used to doing this, or we did this in 115 with numbers. Like when we had X squared plus 8X plus 18 equals zero, then you would do one and negative eight and 18 and plug and chug, okay? This is weird because it's all variables. So T is gonna equal the opposite of B, which in this case is negative P, plus or minus the square root, negative P quantity squared minus four times A times C all over two A. So we simplify everything we can. Two negatives in a row make a positive. A negative P times a negative P is positive P squared minus four DN all over 2d. And that's it. We don't know what the variables are, so that's it. And don't worry about that one. It did not make the test. All right, let's look at 16 on the circle fun. So the radius of a circle is 2.5 centimeters. Find the length of the arc intercepted by 120 degree central angle. Round to tenths. Okay. So radius is 2.5 centimeters. 
central angle is 120 degrees. So look, what this is, if we drew a picture of it, there's my circle. We've got 120 degrees on the central angle and 2.5 centimeters on the radius. That's also 2.5. But what they want you to find here is this length. From there to there. So sort of like circumference of the circle, but only this piece of it, so not the whole thing. And so we have a formula for this. It is arc length is equal to radius times theta, where theta is in radians, okay? So S is arc length, R is 2.5, Radians, it's going to be 120 degrees. And again, uh, this happened, I think, in this, in 116, we converted from degrees to radians, radians to degrees. So look, there's 180 degrees in pi radians. I want radians to say degrees to go, so I put that 180 on the bottom. The degrees cancel, and then top times top, bottom times bottom. Numerators, 120 pi, denominator, 180. And that's in radians. And again, you can reduce if you want to. I don't suggest you do because you're kind of wasting your effort. We're, we want the decimal approximation here. We don't want an exact answer. So just do 120 pi over 180. That's in radians. So 2.5 times 120 times pi divided by 180. Hit enter. Make sure you round at the end, it's 5.23598757, and they only want it to tenths, so 5.2 centimeters. So that's our arc length, 5.2 centimeters. All right. Next, radius is 14.6, central angle is 62. Same dog, different fleas. Look, I, I'm not even going to erase this one. It's just exactly the same. They just gave us the radius is 14.6 and the angle, central angle is 62 degrees. So it's just S equals R theta. S is equal to 14.6 times 62 pi over 180. And um, there we go. I did have a student uh, in the past, seven, nine, eight, and this time they want us to round a hundredths, so that'll take the nine up to a 10, it'll be 15.80 centimeters. I did have a, a past student say, wait, 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 instead of doing this separately, couldn't we just put that into the formula, just say put the degrees and then times pi and divided by 180, because that's always what's gonna happen. And yeah, you could do that if you wanted to, if, if that makes it simpler for you. Have at it. All right. So there we are. Um, 5.2 and 15.8. Okay, so keep going. 18 is a chord length is... 6.84 inches and a circle with a radius of 4.67 radius. Okay, 4.72 inches. Uh, find the following. The perpendicular distance from the center of the circle to the chord. Oh, all right. And the depth of the chord. Okay. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna need a pretty, pretty picture here. Let's draw a picture of what's going on. We got a circle, we got a chord given. Um, they did tell us the radius of the circle. So the radius to the chord and the radius to the chord would be the same. The radius of the circle is 4.72. We have both of those. They want us to find this distance from here to here, from the center to the chord at a 90 degree angle. And so that is, we'll call that X, okay? 
So when we set that up for A, find um, the perpendicular distance from the center to the chord in hundredths. I'm going to just draw this triangle, okay? So we know the hypotenuse is 4.72, that's 90 degrees. So I just took this triangle and I drew it right here. And I also know they did give me another piece of information. They gave me the chord length. The whole chord length is 6.84. When it goes from the center to the chord, it's going to bisect that. So it's going to cut it into two equal pieces. So this is uh, 3.42 and this is 3.42. So I got that, 3.42. So now we just use Pythagorean's theorem. I'll call that X like I did right there. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, x squared plus 3.42 squared equals 4.7 squared, 72 squared. And then I subtract that off. What the heck? 3, 4, 2 squared, 2 squared, okay, so that goes away. And I end up with um, x squared is equal to, that's 22.27, that's 11.69, it's 10.582, and then I take the square root. And so it is plus or minus the square root, but we only want the positive because it's a length. So 3.2529, we'll just call it 3.25. All right, inches. So we found x. Uh, they want the depth of the chord, so that is how deep is the chord from there. They want this length. Well, that, we know the two pieces of information we need. We need the radius, which we know is 4.72, and we just found this is 3.25. Um, so for part B, it's 4.72 minus 3.25. Okie dokie, so that's 1.47. And then, oh, there was a part C. They want to know, um, find the angle. They want us to find this angle right here. So, okay, let's find that angle. We've got a picture already right here. So here's our angle. So which one uses opposite? And hypotenuse. So you go back to right triangle trig. There's a right triangle here. Remember sine Sokotoa. So Sokotoa. That's a mnemonic device. Sokotoa, Sokotoa, Sokotoa. So that when you're just working on problems that involve right triangles, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the pieces of information they gave us here were opposite and hypotenuse. So we would say sine. The sine of theta, we don't know that yet, is 3.42 opposite over hypotenuse, 4.72. And so now you're going to use your um, calculator make sure you're in degrees so theta is equal to arc sine that's the second sine so it says sine negative one of 3.42 over 4.72 and then hit enter and that'll kick out 46.4 degrees except you might say well wait 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 46 degrees that's great, but you know what? They didn't ask for just that part. They wanted to know the central angle that intercepts the chord. So they want the whole thing. So we found half 46. If that's 46, that's 46. We add it up and that's 92. If you told me 93 because you doubled it from here, I'd accept that also. So in this case, I'd accept 92 degrees or 93 degrees. 93 is accurate, a little more accurate because we rounded here to 46 and then doubled it. If we just doubled it first, we would get 92.8 and then round to a whole degree, it would be 93 degrees. So I will accept 92 or 93 for that one. All right, let's keep going. We got um, a couple more pages here. We'll do this page. I think there's gonna be a part three here. Long review.
Okay, so number 19, eight equally spread holes on the circumference of a circle, radius is 25.6 inches. Find the distance from each hole. Oh, all right. Well, this isn't bad then. Let's see, we'll do a circle. We've got eight evenly spaced. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Like across from each other, everything's across from each other. And so they want this distance. They want a distance from here to there. So it isn't the arc. This isn't an arc length problem. All right. Now, we know they gave us the radius. So we know this is... 25.6, and this is 25.6, because the radius of the circle will be the same no matter where. Um, it's eight spread out into eight equal pieces, so 360 degrees, divided by eight equal pieces, we know the central angle is 45 degrees. So we got that. Okay. So find... Um, this length from there to there. So what we're gonna do is here, I'll draw the triangle. I'm gonna put it right side up. So what do we know about this triangle? Well, we know that angle is 45 degrees. So if I drop an altitude, it's 22.5 there, right? And we know the hypotenuse is 25.6. So we've got a right triangle we want this length. We actually want the whole thing, so we're going to double whatever we find. So x, 22.5, and 25.6. So which one is opposite? And I found it, that sine, so we know the sine of 22.5 degrees is equal to x over 25.6, and then cross multiply and solve. So x is equal to 25.6 sine 22.5. That gives me half of my answer. So that is um, 9.79 dot, 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 dot. We'll call it 9.8. All right. So if I know this is 9.8 from here to here, well, then that's also 9.8. 9.8 and 9.8. So times 2. And we're looking at 19.6 inches. All right. Let's look at toy. Five equally spaced holes, uh, radius is 38.9. Find the distance between all al alternate holes. Oh, okay. So really, same dog, different fleas, right? Five, one, two, three, four, five. And this time they want us to find that distance. So if we know 360, divided by five, <clears throat> uh, we know that is what, um, 72 degrees each. So if that's, if it's 72 degrees, 72 degrees, 72 degrees, 72 degrees, that's 144 degrees total here. Right, because 72 plus 72 is 144. And so let's take a look at what we have and what uh, we're trying to find here. We want... This is 144, so if I drop an altitude, that's 72 degrees right there. We know the radius is 38.9, and they want us to find that. So opposite... Hypotenuse, the sine of 72 degrees is equal to x over 38.9. Cross multiply and solve, 38.9 times the sine, 72 degrees. And so that is 37, 36.996, which is 37. 
And then if that's 37 from there to there, that's also 37 from there to there. And so a grand total of 74.0 centimeters for our length. All right, uh, 21, circle with radius 42.5. Find the area of the sector whose central angle is, oh, 72 degrees. So just the same picture I had here. Area of a sector is that piece of the circle, like a, a piece of pizza. So you could say you're, you're consuming a sector of the entire pie. All right, so 72 degrees, and they told us the radius is 42.5. This is number 21. And they want the area of the sector, so they want this area. They want me to find that right there. Okay, so just think area of a circle, the area of the entire circle would be pi r squared. That would be the area of the whole circle. So the area of the sector would be pi r squared, but then times just this piece, 72 three sixtieths, because that's only 72 degrees of the whole 360 degrees. So 72 three sixtieths is the percent of, you know, the, the circle that we want. So the area of the sector is now we just plug in chunks of pi times 42.5 squared times 72 divided by 360. And so that is 1135 square centimeters. We rounded to a whole number. Okay. Okay, we'll do part three coming up next.